welcome to the Connected Growth Coaching Podcast, where we support women to rediscover who they are so they can thrive in all parts of their lives. Your hosts, Jen Heilman and Amanda Kingsley, share with you unique life coaching resources centered around the power of the mind and the ancient practice of feng shui. All right, Jen, my friend, are you ready to talk about Mm, I'm so ready for this. I am so ready. I love the fame area. This is an ar- this is an arch nemesis of mine, but it's also a, such a huge, um, exciting place to talk about. It, do you find that it's an arch nemesis for many women? I do. I do find that it is a huge arch nemesis for women. Um, yeah, I really feel like. Um, This is a major theme in most women that I encounter that um, approach me for feng shui. Uh, This is something that is a that really um, is highlighted in their in their lives that they are hiding, um, they are dousing their their fire, they are you know dimming their light. All of those things are related to the fame area. So it's yeah. Absolutely. It's an ongoing thing. Yeah, I know we've seen that in our joint clients for sure. But yeah, okay, let's step back a second. Yeah, (laughs) we just jumped right in there, didn't we? (laughs) We did. This week, we are moving around the Bagua, and we've um, come to fame and reputation. So if you have out your Bagua map, it is um, right basically across from your architectural front door. Um. And so tell us, Jen, what's the most important thing to know about this area? Uh, This area is really about um, respect and acknowledgement, right? Mm -hmm. Acknowledgement for your skills and talents, uh, accessing respect. And and when I say respect, I mean self-respect, you know, respecting your own skills and and strengths and talents, but also um, when you have that power within you and you're really shining your light, you are magnetizing respect from other people Mm -hmm. because they are really seeing you um, for your value and for your worth. And so oftentimes, particularly as women, we dim that light or we hide it um, for a whole, you know, thousands of reasons, you know, um, for whatever story there is behind it. A lot of times we, um, we, we hide our, our, our purpose, right? We, we, we feel these like inner feelings of, you know, this is what I'm supposed to do in the world. This is, this is how I'm supposed to show up in the world, but then we're criticized for it. And it, we start to get criticized for those things really early in life um, because maybe it doesn't uh, match up with the community you live in or it's, you know, something that um, your parents weren't ready to register in their own lives, you know, um, those kinds of things. And so they ask you to, you know, calm it down or don't show it or they make you feel like it's you're doing something wrong, you know? And so, um, and none of that is anybody's fault. It's just kind of the way of the world. And so particularly as women, we tend to dim that really strong light and that really strong power that does magnetize all of the things, you know, that come to us easily. And that's why it's called the fame area. It's not like, um, Britney Spears fame, you know, like it's more, (laughs) right. It's not about like, you know, having millions and millions of people knowing your name. It's, um, and knowing who you are, it's more about magnetizing that energy that, that, um, really you showing up as your best self, um, brings, you know, it's bringing that out into the light and that magnetizes so many things into your life. Yeah, I think the word respect is really important. Like, when you use that word, it sort of, like, 
I don't know, it makes the fame part make more sense. And so you can have fame and not be respected, right? And that's like... Oh, yeah. Right? That's a very good point, right? And mm-hmm. yeah, I mean, Britney Spears, you know, unfortunately, you know, she is incredibly talented and all that kind of stuff, but she, you know, she isn't necessarily respected, you know? That's, yeah, that is the, the difference for sure. Wow. Interesting. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay, so how does, let's talk about the, because I always think it's important to understand the more intimate relationship we have with ourselves and this area and our family. So there's like the small picture and then how that connects out to the big picture. And like in all the work that we do, I feel like this is the core. It's like, right, yeah it at this like foundational personal intimate level you can then make the impact you desire to make in the world by just being you so how does this space um navigate those waters right yeah so it really is about you know how you show up in the world right and really um understanding your worth and 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 having that that sense of self-respect, you know, like, you know, not in a, not in an ego motivated kind of way, but just like, I have strengths and skills that I can offer the world. And, you know, in doing so, I, you know, am shining my light and I'm showing people how to shine their own light and just showing up in a, in a bigger way. And, um, you know, I think that, in being able to do that, you know, in, in reference to how we relate that back to our own families and our own, own intimate relationships and stuff like that, it's, you know, showing our kids, you know, how to fully shine, you know, and, and be ourselves in a really um, amazing way and just to show up in that, in that light and to give them permission to do so as well. You know, I, I think in this generation that we are creating, you know, the moms, our, you know, generation of moms and the kids that are following us, we're really starting to allow them to, to accept themselves in a, in a much bigger way and to show up in the world in a much bigger way. Um, and to stop hiding. At least that's how I feel. Like I just look at my kids and I'm like, Whoa, you know, I would have never done that, you know, or, um, you know, felt comfortable doing, you know, what my kids are capable of doing. And it's, it's, it's amazing. You know, they are just showing up as, as themselves and it's because they have been encouraged to do so, you know, that's, yeah. Yeah. Do you think the pendulum, I'm I'm like sort of going off topic here, but like, do you think the pendulum will swing that like, yeah, it is such a drastic difference between when we were kids and now raising our own kids. Like it's really is like they live in a different world. Yeah, absolutely. I wonder how far it will swing (laughs) before it comes back to center in terms of like, just because I feel like there's a lot of showing up right now that um, that is like it, it's not com- – and I don't know if commanding is the right word, but it's not um, commanding respect. It's more just like, here I am. You have to look at me. Um, oh, yeah. You know what wow. I mean? Yes, I know exactly what you mean. It's the wrong thing, but I do think it's it is part of that pendulum shift. Whereas even when we were growing up, it was like I have to hide who I am, and now we're in this stage where it's like I'm gonna you're gonna look at me, you're gonna see me for who I am, whether you like it or not. Right. um, You know, and and for new listeners, Jenna and I are both raising teenagers, so we do see this. You know, in in our kids, it's really sometimes really obvious in how different their school experience is than ours and their social experience. Um, But yeah, I don't know where that came from for me, but I think it's really interesting and comes back to that word again of respect and just um, Mm. showing up for who you are for yourself, not Mm. to prove a point or, or make people see something that they're ready, not ready to see. I, yeah, I think that's uh, such a huge, 
Yeah, uh, such a valid point. Um, yeah, I do see that. You're you're absolutely right. I I see kids, you know, showing up in in a big way, but not necessarily with self respect or respect yeah. for other people. It's just yeah, here I am, and um, yeah, absolutely. And I think the balance, and you definitely touched on the balance, which is having that self respect and being and being able to show up in the world and not really caring what other people think. Right. Whereas, you know, our kids are very much caring what other people think, whether they think they are or not, you know, um, they're putting it out there in a different way. And so, um, yeah, absolutely. I think that. Yeah. It's like, I'm showing up as me for me. For me, right? Because Which this is my is, strength and this is where I stand yeah. in confidence. Yeah. Which ends mm-hmm. up being for you, but I'm showing up as me for me versus like I'm showing up as me for you. Woo. Right. Ah, Woo. Kind yeah. Of blown. I didn't anticipate going here. So. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, um, assuming people have sort of imagined where their fame and reputation area is in their own home or office or bedroom or however they want to look at it, or they're going to go home and they're going to figure it out. Um, Mm -hmm. And all of our episodes have links to Jen's um, blog post about the Bagua map and how to identify that for yourself. So if you're new to feng shui, make sure you get a hold of that map. Um, so tell us the most effective do's and like the most important don'ts for this area. Right. So this one is, it has a really obvious do's and do and don't. And, um, like we touched on last week, if you guys were listening to the podcast last week with the career area, which is all about water, uh, the fame area, which is the opposite gua of the career area is all about fire. And so, Really, um, it can be really obvious when you find your fame area. And in most houses, um, it's the kitchen, the kitchen sink, or it's a bathroom, or in my case, it's a pool, like we talked about last week. (laughs) I have a massive pool, and it basically takes up my whole fame area. Um, And so there is that water element that you are dousing your fire right you're Mm -hmm. you're literally trying to extend extinguish that fire and basically say like don't look over here you know I've got I've got nothing that you want you know so please don't acknowledge me um and that's a really common theme in most women's lives that we encounter is that they are unknowingly dousing that fire and wondering why they are not getting the respect or receiving acknowledgement for their skills and talents and strengths. And um, so it's a very much an awareness. And it, it, that's what I love about feng shui is that it brings this level of awareness that you may have not encountered in any other modality, right? And so um, it, be, it becomes this obvious thing where, you know, in the fame area of my kitchen, I have a kitchen sink, you know, so, and then in the fame area of my upstairs, um, the second floor of my home, I have a bathroom. So it's, it's amazing when you start to see these themes carried out um, throughout your house, how you can become aware of that story or that theme um, that's going on in your life. And you can, you know, having that awareness, you are able to do something about it. So adding fire to those areas, um, you know, in very safe ways, you can either do it with light, you can add a light to that area, you can add literal fire with, within, you know, safely with a candle. Um, and so it's just really important to get that fire and light really amped up in those areas that you are dousing that, um, unconsciously dousing that fire. Yeah. So, So, and then I was just going to say diminishing a little bit of the water as well. So, yeah. You said something about, um, you know, like dimming your light, like don't look over here. And it just had me wondering, how much of that is like, don't look over here, I have nothing to offer you? And how much of that is like, don't look over here, it, it's it's not safe. Like, I mm. won't be safe anymore if you see me for who I really am. Like, mm. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You, um, 
yeah, how do you balance that when you're working in the fame area and that feeling of like exposing myself, you know, versus like, it's a little different than the self-worth part. Whereas you're like, I don't, I don't feel safe putting myself out there. So how do I manage that? Any, right. any right. thoughts there? Yeah, absolutely. <clears throat> um, there, that is the beauty of feng shui is that it, it, it allows you to tap into those, those feelings and, and maybe that awareness of, you know, of having that fear of being seen, you know, is not totally obvious, but, um, when you add the candle, you know, when you add the fire, when you add the spark to that area, it starts to, uh, stir up that energy. And so it brings around that awareness of, you know, oh, I guess I don't feel safe, you know, yeah, right. you know, shining my light. And then it starts to uncover, well, why, you know, why do I not feel safe shining my light? And what's the story around that, you know? So yeah, I that's think that, true. yeah. That is the beauty of feng shui is it like allows us to see these things. And then I think, you know, the beauty, I know that the beauty of the work that we do together is with our clients is, the, the first thing I ask everybody when we get on a weekly call is like, you know, what came up for you when you were working with Jen? You know, when she asked you to look at your fame area, well, where was the resistance? Because let's talk about that. Let's work yeah. through that from a life coaching perspective. Um, so you're not making these changes and then feeling like so vulnerable that, it, you know, it, it rocks the boat. So, right. Yeah. Right. Ooh, yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So I mean, yeah, it's that that's the beauty of how we work together is, you know, finding these awarenesses and then being able to work through them, you know, instead of just being like, here's the awareness. Now have a nice day, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, it's it's so amazing that then you step in and you say, well, what is really going on? And it's um, you know you're able to kind of dig through that fear of showing up and that that feeling of not wanting to um, be seen, basically. So, and then the feng shui, and it comes, it does this great cyclical thing, you know, like you keep coming back and lighting the candle to, you know, relieve some of that pressure and resistance, you know, and then it's worked through and the layers get, you know, dug into a little bit deeper, a little bit deeper, a little bit deeper. And all of a sudden you're realizing that, you know, when you were, four years old, you know, something happened and you were told not to do something and, you know, all of the stories that come up and you realize, oh my gosh, like that is just crazy that that story has basically, you know, defined me not wanting to show up in the world and yeah. it's just a story. And so now I can work through it and I can work beyond it and I can show up in the world with intention, um, you know, and yeah, I mean, it's, yeah, it's incredible. Yeah. And so when you're doing this work, whether with us or on your own, just keep asking questions, you know, if you're really feeling resistance or even if you're feeling excited, just keep asking questions like who, what, when, where, why, like just keep going um, to undig because it's truly amazing. So I could probably guess what you would say is the, if our listeners were to walk away and do one thing in this area, um, if they were to go home and be like, okay, I'm going to apply one simple thing to the fame and reputation area, what, what would that one thing be? Absolutely. I mean, number one thing is candle, you know, lighting a candle and setting an intention in that space. Um, if it's, you know, in, especially if you have water, you know, in that area, if you find it, probably one of the most common things to find in your fame area is either your kitchen sink or your bathroom. And so setting up a routine around those areas, like washing the dishes in the evening, lighting a candle first, setting the intention, 
you know, and then um, doing the dishes or in the bathroom, whether it's in the morning or in the evening or, or both, you know, lighting a candle while you're brushing your teeth or, you know, um, washing your face or taking a shower in the morning, something that's going to, you know, really just whatever the intention is, right, whether it's just something as really simple as, you know, to access more respect, you know, or to be acknowledged um, for your skills and talents or to just for your own sake, you know, just um, getting in touch with that self-respect or showing up in the world. Um, You know, I just come back to um, when I was at that speaking engagement um, a couple weekends ago and uh, one of my... um, one of my associates came up to me and said, I just, you know, every time I think of you, I think of lighting that candle in my fame area. And actually it wasn't, that's not what it was. It wasn't lighting the candle. She has an orange towel. (laughs) Mm -hmm. So you can use color, right. To represent that fire. She has an orange towel in her bathroom. And every time she sees that towel, she, you know, puts her shoulders back and she stands up a little straighter and she shows up, you know, and, um, and so that's the power of lighting that candle, you know, is just showing up in a more powerful, you know, uh, you know, shoulders back, head up, I'm, this is who I am. And, you know, and then that magnetizes, you know, all of those things that you're, you're craving. So, yeah. Yeah. Awesome. yeah. Sweet. Should we take a little break and come on back, dig a little Uh, little bit deeper? (laughs) Sure. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's face it. No two lives are the same and there are no one size fits all tips and tricks. We love connecting with you on the podcast, but remember that if you want game changing results, one-on-one coaching is where it's at. You can access our programs at connectedgrowthcoaching.com and we will walk you through the unique circumstances that arise in your life and your home. All right. Are you ready to go in? Ready to? I, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Let's dig in deeper. So this is the point in the show where I encourage you to get out pen and paper because that is always the most effective way to process. Um, Or talk to a friend. That's also super effective. Jen and I learned so much about ourselves just talking to each other. Um, But I think, like Jen said, this is a big area, um, especially for women. So I would encourage you, the first question I would um, encourage you to look at is, how does the world see you? Um, how do you believe the world sees you? What do you think they see in you? How do you think they receive you? Um, and that actually, the, the other question that goes right with that is how do you see yourself? And I really couldn't decide which question was more important to look at mm. first. So you can look at them in either order But what's really important is to think about how the world sees you and think about how you see yourself. And it's the difference that matters. That's where you're going to learn the most is to note how different those two things are. And um, you could do this exercise by literally asking how the world sees you. You know, every once in a while on social media, you'll see those posts that are like, you know, I'm doing a whatever challenge, like, tell me the three words that describe me. So you could literally do something like that. But I would encourage you to first give your own interpretation of how you think the world sees you. Um, And then really just what are the differences? And why? Why? Like, why do you see yourself so differently or maybe not so differently than the way the world sees you and how is that affecting how you show up, how you present yourself um, to the world in your inner, um, you know, in your more intimate circles and then also in in the less intimate circles, um, in social media, in the public eye, um, in your community. Um, So really just pay attention to what that difference is. And then, you know, if you want to take it a step further, dig into how you can sort of 
close that gap a little because ideally we want to see ourselves and how and we want the world to see us in a very similar way we want to be able to present fully in our truth and then have the world see that like wow this person is really showing up rock solid in who they are um in all of the glory and the ugliness that that being human is <laughs> um because it's a wild ride um so that's the first thing i would encourage you to think about um i love that are you already I love that in jen <laughs> yeah I, I i love the that um i and i love the reference to um the facebook you know analogy of um people asking you know, the, the top three words or the top word that describes, um, I, d I just, you know, would definitely take that challenge on to do that, you know, after, after you write it out, because, um, it's really eye opening. I remember doing that and the words that came in were just, um, just, you know, I couldn't believe it. I was like, really? That's how you think of me? In a good way, in a good way. You know, I was just, I, I was blown away by it. I was blown away by it. And so, um, yeah, I think that it's the, the words that, that come through um, are really eye-opening in how you are showing up in the world that you may not even think you are doing, you know, so, yeah. yeah. It's always a good reminder of the impact that you are making. Yeah, right. Yes, exactly. I show mm -hmm. up and being you. So yeah, it's good stuff. It's important exercise. Um, and the next thing I'll ask you to do is to go a little deeper and ask, like, when in your life have you felt the most respected? When have you felt like you really showed up as who you were and that others were deeply interested and curious and honored to be in your presence or, or to hear your wisdom? Um, and it may be as a mother, it may be as a, you know, a CEO, it may be as a school teacher, but when in your life have you felt the most respect? And the important part of this question is to then dig a little deeper and say, how did you get there? You know, what were you thinking? How did you feel? What was it in you that brought that respect, um, that, that invited that respect from the outside world? Were you thinking, like, I have a lot of knowledge to share? or um, I made this beautiful sweater I'm wearing or um, like what was it what I created this beautiful piece of art that people are enjoying what was it that you did and how did you feel and what were you thinking to get to that place where you were really just inviting and attracting that natural respect um, and it sounds kind of like well, I don't really know. Some of that question might really stump some people, but this comes back again. I mean, we'll probably mention it on every episode we ever do, but how you do one thing is how you do everything. And if you can identify how you were feeling when that respect came really naturally to you, and you can identify what you were thinking, you can use those feelings and those thoughts in other places in your life to just really show up in a way that is authentic and real and attractive and impactful in a way that feels really good. Um, so that's some serious journaling if you decide to take it on and please reach out to us like, Tell us how it felt to light that candle in your fame area. Tell us how it felt to dig into these like self reflections and um, and to sit down with the pen and paper and really think about it, or just to to ponder those questions in the rest of your drive before you get where you're going. Um, but we are always open and curious to hear what's coming up for you um, post podcast. <laughs> Yeah, post podcast. I love that. <laughs> and podcasting yeah. is um, podcasting is actually if we have entrepreneurs who are listening, 
Um, it's a really powerful experience because, and this is the second podcast I've been a part of, um, it's so different than social media in that you, or really, really much else, um, writing or that you put yourself out there and you throw this information out into the world and it's not all that trackable. You don't really, you don't get likes, you don't get comments, you don't get, <laughs> um, mm. Certainly, we appreciate every single review that comes through because that's a powerful way for us to um, understand how our work is being received. But podcasting is a really, um, as an entrepreneur, it's a really interesting way to just put yourself out there, share what you know to be true, um, share what's coming up for you, impact other people, and step away from that sort of response that the the fame and reputation of the yeah I was just gonna say all of that relates so yeah. uh, in such a big way to the fame and reputation area right, right. Mm -hmm. it's like I just show up and I podcast every week and Jen and I um self-admittedly are not very good at tracking our results so we're not really numbers people so you know for us in particular like we put it out there because we know it's important and we put it out there we because we know that one listener if not many more are gonna be like that's what exactly what I needed to hear and do today um, and there's a lot of power in that um, for anyone who's thinking about podcasting and and interested in stepping into those waters it's a place where you get to just really show up as you with this. I mean, I, I'd say in both podcasts I've done, and, and I'd be curious what you think, Jen. It's like, I just know when I get on here that it's going to help somebody. And I don't care if it's one person or a thousand people or a million people. It's just like, right. mm -hmm. I do this because I know it to be true. And if I know it to be true, someone else is going to resonate. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. And it's just a really great exercise in just speaking your truth and, and showing up, you know, in a really powerful way. So yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I, I know, you know, that just getting on here and being candid and showing up um, and shining our life and light and, you know, um, really just putting ourselves out there, we're helping someone else, you know? So yeah, absolutely. 100% yeah. agree. Yeah. Good stuff. Yeah. Um, what are we talking Good. about next week? Next week we are next week. talking about creativity mm. and children, I think. Um, okay. <laughs> I'll take your word for it. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> um, it is one of my favorite places. Uh, it happens to be my bathroom, <laughs> which is not my favorite place. But, um, yeah, I think creativity and children is a really, really fun place to to do feng shui work in and to see the results of. So, absolutely, I have, and I have my absolute favorite feng shui story ever in the children and creativity area. So I'll have to tell that story next week. Perfect, I love it. Right until then. Okay. As always, thanks for listening. If you learned something today that can help the people in your circle, please help us get the word out by sharing. When you leave us a rating and review on iTunes, it not only warms our hearts, but it helps people find us. We are eternally grateful for your support, and we're looking forward to connecting with you next week. Until then, you can find the show notes at www.connectedgrowthcoaching.com. You can grab your journal and then get your shui on.